So today we're, we're gonna do a little throwback story to one of the most epic days I've ever had and I will never ever forget it. it it ranks among with the the 49 pound bag that we caught if you guys haven't watched that video go back and watch it but it was the first time i ever caught 30 pounds it like broke that 30 pound that dirty 30 mark on my own fishing and you'll never believe the lure i caught it on and you'll never believe how it went down so hit that like and subscribe button let's turn back the clocks of time and go back to my first 30 pound bag on lake okeechobee so let's set up a little context. So back in the day, I had a job where I worked Tuesday through Saturday. So during the week and then Saturday, I'd be I'd be working and then I'd have Sunday and Monday. Probably in my opinion, probably the two worst days to go out because Sunday the lake's beat up and Monday the lake's even more beat up. But basically I would fish Okeechobee Sunday and Monday every week because those are the days what I had, dude. You know, you go to work and, and you go fishing on the days that you have. And I was actually fishing something that looked a lot like this stuff out here. It was a round reed sort of hard Edge. and for, for those of you guys that know the lake it was called the observation shoal and it was about this time of year dude it was dead hot and one of the keys was the water was super low um, super low and super clear but there was a lot of grass in the lake so it kept the water super clear super beautiful but what was really cool is these fish would get on the edge of, of these round reed lines they'd get on the edge and the brim would spawn near the edge and we all know late summer especially around those full moons when those brims spawn those bass get super shallow even if the water's 96 95 92 even if the water super duper warm they will get shallow because all those brim are up there and they love those big brim when they're spawning and one of the coolest things you guys watch me and i use a lot of sonar a lot of my lawrence hgs lives to track fish down you know using technology now well I actually saw 30 pounds before I caught it using my eyeballs and I was looking at a small round reed point that looked just like this and I'm like huh What's that on the bottom? So I trolled up, and, and it's always important when you're fishing shallow water to stay quiet. So I had the trolling motor on super low, so I creeped up, and I looked down in the water. It's about two foot deep or so. Laying on the bottom, there's about a six foot alligator. And late in the summer, the alligators, just like anything else, are super warm, so they lay on the bottom of the lake. And I'm like, oh, I better, I better look out for him, right? So he's laying on the bottom. I see him down there. And it was kind of cool because it's a giant lizard dinosaur laying on the bottom, right? So I looked once i got up close to that alligator i looked a little forward right at that round reed point and i saw two dark things and i thought they were moving and i'm like huh that kind of looks like bass so i kind of let the wind sort of push me back ever so gently and i stopped for a second and i picked up one of the most classic classic subtle bass baits ever i picked up one of these a fluke this is actually a gambler super stud but it's you know your standard soft plastic jerk bait and, and the way i rig this thing is i'll put it on like either a three aught or a four aught either a wide gap or a just a standard like gap like o'shaughnessy style hook like a three aught four aught and i'll run it on I, I think at the time since we're fishing around grass i had it on 15 pound monofilament the reason i did that is i wanted the bait to stay high in the water column but then i'd have like 15 to 30 pound backing um a braid backing on the back but on a spin rod you know and it was right on the edge of the round reeds and I picked this up because it, basically if they were fish that I was seeing I didn't want to spook them by my splash of my bait I wanted everything to be super natural and subtle and even though it was I think it was like an albino shad kind of color that I was using even though it's like white it still looks a lot like kind of like a skedaddling brim you know it, it walks back and forth and the fish on the Lake Okeechobee are very into a spook you know a topwater spook when they're, when they're really tuned on but there wasn't much wind and the water was super clear so I wanted to stay subtle so I got out a fluke just a classic absolutely classic bait so I, I cast it up there and then I'm like twitch twitch and I feel my rod load up and I'm like no way dude I, I pull back thank god these fish weren't back in the reeds they were just on this this point and I saw them just swim it around and I'm like dude that's like a six and a half pounder so I'm fighting it with the spinning tackle. I get it to the boat. I'm like, dude, this is awesome. I just caught a giant and on light tackle too, you know, to an extent. So super cool. So what I did though, when I fought that fish is I got off the trolling motor and let that slight breeze push me back. Cause I'm like, dude, I didn't see, see like one. I saw multiple little things swimming around. So I reset the boat after catching the six, six and change. And, and I get kind of close, but I still want to be able to make a long cast. So I drop back, but I, I look up there with my polarized glasses again and I see what I think is, is two more things swimming around. And I'm like, dude, there's a pod of them. 
And, and there was. I, we'll just jump to it. So basically what happens is these fish get in what we call as anglers wolf packs. Um, it's not like a school of fish. It's more like a group of three to five, three to seven fish. And they group up and they chase these brim along hard lines or around brim beds, either on the edge of things, even offshore I've caught them doing this. And so basically I made that long cast again. The key being is I really stayed off of them. I didn't want to get on top of them, even though I wanted to see them some more make the cast again I catch a seven pounder and I'm like dude this is the coolest thing like I literally saw the fish go to it eat it you know I set the hook without even feeling them there I just saw them dart over lifted felt a little weight set the hook fight them the water's pretty open because we were at the edge so I was able to land them on that spinning tackle so I got a seven pounder I'm like dude there is no freaking way I'm getting another bite off this yeah I, I did it all off of one spot. I cast back with that fluke. Once again, it, it, the big key was I tried to be, other than catching the fish, I tried to be as quiet as I possibly could. This fluke presentation is very subtle. In that clear water, it's perfect. I can deliver it without much splash. I can cast it a mile because the plastic, especially on a, just like a medium action spinning rod, actually weighs quite a bit. So you can bullet it over to a target really far away. I had that monofilament leader, which I think really helped and it helped keep keep the bait up gun it over catch another six pounder I'm like dude this is so cool so at that point i'm like you know what i better mix it up a classic lure um on any of these grass lakes even in gunnersville is a swimming worm so i actually got out a mag style swimming worm on a bait caster because i'm like i want to mix up my presentations just so they're not seeing the same thing cast it over catch another six pounder so what were we at like six six 12 18 7 what is that 225 so we're at 25 pounds with four fish and i'm like dude no freaking way is this going down like i'm so close to a dirty 30 this is one of the most epic days i've had and it's all off of one spot so once again when i caught that that last fish i sort of let the boat drift back i tried to stay off the trolling motor as much as possible and all you guys that fish shallow know how important it is to be subtle to be quiet when you're dealing with these shallow water fish especially around grass you don't want the trolling motor running into stuff you don't want it running on high you need to be sneaky you need to be sort of like camouflaged in a way it's it's a very subtle process to keep them biting it looked a lot like those strands that are hanging out so you got the hard little point the clump right here and then you had those little small strands sticking out i'm like dude i bet you if they're there they're probably right there too so i bust this guy out again the fluke i make a super long cast i hit a couple strands of the grass and in doing so, I actually saw a couple of the reeds kind of shake. And oftentimes, you guys fish grass, you know, oftentimes that means there's a fish swimming around in there that you spooked them. They kick around a little bit. They swim. Maybe they do a circle. And I'm like, dude, I blew it. I screwed it up. So twitch, 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 nothing happens. I get the bait all the way back to the boat. I'm like right here at the boat. The water is gin clear, dude. So this alligator had been maybe like 10 feet away from me. And the whole time I'm watching to see, cause oftentimes those alligators will lay on the bottom, but if some commotion starts in that, they'll be like, hey, what's going on? Now that uh, you woke me up, I'm kind of hungry. And so you have to be a little careful during the summer, especially when you're fishing super shallow, that you don't reach down, grab a fish, and then have like an alligator like three foot behind it. So I look back, the alligator's still laying there. I'm like, good to go. I'm twitching the bait back. And dude, there's like a four and a half, five pounder following the bait. And I'm like, ah! so I kind of like stop. I twitch once, twitch twice, nothing happens. He's still following the bait, twitch. And then you know how sometimes you get too close to the boat, they see the boat or they see you, they see the shadow, whatever they see, they're looking up and they're like, dude, this, is, this, is, this ain't going down. Like, I, I know what's happening right here. You're trying to catch me. Turns around, bolts back to the grass. And I'm like, dude, <sighs> this close to a dirty 30. And I just freaking blew it. I re go back around. I reset the boat and make the exact cast where I caught that six, actually the two sixes and the seven. Literally perfect cast. I dropped the bait right next to the round reeds without hitting the round reeds. Subtle splash, almost like no splash whatsoever. The alligator is right there under me. Twitch, twitch. I see one of the reeds move and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like five to 10 foot off the reed line with the bait. And I'm like, dude, he'll never come up. Dude, I make a twitch, and if you guys fish a fluke, you know the best feeling in the world. It's twitch, twitch, there's nothing there, and you go to twitch the bait once again, and it's doing this figure eight, and your rod tip just bends up because your rod has loaded up. Twitch, twitch, stop. 
something absolutely just stopped the bait. I reel down, it's another six and a half, seven pounder, dude. I'm fighting it. Now, here's where things get a little dicey. I'm fighting the fish, and I'm back where I saw the alligator laying on the bottom. I look over, the alligator's moving around, and I'm like, dude, we are not going full shark tuna with this. Like, this guy is not getting this fish. Number one, because I don't want him to hurt the fish. Number two, I want my dirty 30, dude. So I'm fighting the fish. The alligator's like to my left. I do everything I can with that spinning rod to try to bring the fish around the nose of the boat and then over to here so I can land him. Always keeping an eye on the alligator. The alligator starts walking along the bottom because he's getting interested. I'm fighting the fish. I finally get him to the side and I snatch him, dude. And I got the seven pounder. And I'm like, oh, dirty 30 on a Monday solo, dude. But that day was probably one of the most epic days and just a milestone for me. Like I, fishing Okeechobee was back when I was in the tracker. Everybody laughed at me for running the cameras, dude. They can shove that up their duty, you know. But it was it was one of the coolest things. Caught it all on video, on old SD, like standard definition video. But those milestones are really what drive us to fishing. You know, we, we set these various goals. And one of the biggest things for me when I came to Florida was to catch 30 pounds and to do it on my own, on my own initiative in, the, in a way that that I figured out and that's exactly what happened that day and it was one of the most cool things and then we caught a lot of 30 pound bags and a bunch of 40 pound bags after that but we'll save those for some other stories but I hope you guys enjoyed this it was one of the best days I've ever had on the water and I will never ever forget it hit that like and subscribe button drop some of your favorite stories some of your milestones in fishing down in the comments box because I love hearing them I love hearing them from different anglers different things that really motivate us and drive us to get back out on the water and achieve the things that we want to do when it comes to fishing